Hey, my name is Fernando, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And today I'm going to go over some of the new security features in GitLab 14.8. The first new security feature we have is that we now support new types of SSH keys. These keys allow users to take advantage of hardware backed SSH authentication. So, the first thing I'm going to do is plug this hardware security key into my computer and show you how the process works. Now let's go to our terminal and run the SSH keygen command with sudo. We'll add dash t and the key type. In this case, I'm using ecdsa-sk and I'm going to provide a comment as well. Now I need to touch my authenticator, which is my YubiKey, and then I'll enter a location to save and a passphrase and my key has been generated. Now you can cat the key from the location you saved it in and then within our GitLab UI, we can just add it to the SSH keys section. We also have security approval policies. Here you can define a policy of when to require approvals as well as which approvals are required. It's a better experience in many ways than the vulnerability check. It enhances separation of duties and allows management of several policies within one project. In order to set up security approval policies, we go to the security and compliance tab and click on policies. From here, we can click on new policy and under policy type, we're going to go ahead and select scan result. This provides us with a default YAML. We'll click on rule mode and let's add a name, a description, we'll check the policy status to on, and we'll set up a rule. If SAST scan in an open merge request targeting the main branch finds one or more vulnerabilities of any type that are newly detected then we'll require approval now i'm going to go ahead and add someone sam white as the approver and then i can go ahead and create via a merge request Now you can see that we're in a new project called Chachi Security Policy Project. And we take a look at the changes and here's our policy. It's in a separate project because we can perform separation of duties and manage policies in a project with different permissions. Now I'm gonna go ahead and merge this. And going back to my main project, I'm gonna go and click on policies again and when I click on edit project policy, you can see where the security project containing the policies is located. Now I'll go to a merge request, which contains vulnerabilities. You can see that one approval is required from SAM. This is because SAS vulnerabilities were detected. Then there's coverage guided fuzz testing corpus management. In previous versions of GitLab, if you wanted to use a seed corpus in a coverage guided fuzz test, you needed to upload the coverage fuzz seed corpus file using a variable. This made managing a corpus completely manual. Now we've added new variables, which automates the corpus generation, which can be easily integrated into your testing workflow. We can see the generated seed corpuses by going to the security and compliance tab and clicking on configuration. Now we scroll all the way down to coverage fuzzing and click on manage corpus. And here we'll be provided with a list of all the generated corpus files and we can even download them. We can also add our own corpus by clicking on the new corpus button. We'll specify a name and choose the file in zip format. 
In order to enable this feature, go to your GitLab CI YAML and scroll down to your coverage fuzzing job and make sure that you include the following variables. CovFuzz use registry and CovFuzz corpus name. You can now customize built-in SAST and secret detection rules. For each rule, you'll be able to change the name, message, description, and severity fields to help your DevSecOps teams know which vulnerabilities to fix first. In order to create a rule set, we create a directory called .gitlab, and within it, we create a file called sastruleset.toml. Here, I'm creating a rule set override for GoSec. So what's going to happen is any vulnerability detected with the type CWE equaling 703 will have its description, message, name, and severity overwritten. Now if we go to an MR with a vulnerability detected with CWE equals 703, we can see that the vulnerability parameters we specified have been overwritten. If this was merged, these overrides would also be present within the vulnerability report. We've also included several updates for the static analysis analyzers. Here we can see the different updates which have been added. We continuously maintain several open source tools within our infrastructure and update them when needed. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. For more information on GitLab 14.8 Please see the links in the description and make sure to hit that subscribe button.